want to welcome everyone to our podcast series called Lime Time in Texas. Uh, today we have some, uh, some topics for you and I have a special guest today, Tom Scullion, who's with the Texas Transportation Institute, it's part of Texas A&M University. And Tom's got about 40 years experience in uh, doing forensic studies, designing uh, on, on pavements, designing pavements. And uh, we're going to have Tom talk to us a little bit about today about the importance of really building a proper foundation to get long-term performance out of pavements. So. Tom, I'm going to turn it over to you. My name is Tom Scullion. I'm a research fellow at the Texas A&M Transportation Institute. Uh, what I want to talk to you today about is designing long-lasting foundation layers for Texas pavements. What I'm showing you here is a map of the soils that are prevalent in the state of Texas. And the red and the yellow areas are real problematic soils. Um, these soils are known as expansive clay and you, as you see in the picture in the middle of summer these soils will crack and shrink and then in the middle of winter they'll get wet and all the kinds of problems that will happen. The one thing about Texas is that all of the major cities in Texas are built on these problematic soils. What I'm talking about is Dallas, Houston, Beaumont, San Antonio, we built our cities where the soils are very, very poor. Subsequently, the roads have real problems too. Um, so what happens where you build foundation layers, you've got to make sure you build permanent foundation layers. Because if you don't, you'll have problems like you see here. If the, found the foundation layer is what we put the pavement structure on, if it's not stable or it will move around on you, you'll have premature failures in your pavements. What I'm showing you here is a picture on the left of a flexible pavement, which is about seven years old. On the right is a concrete pavement about the same age. Uh, these have got problems, and these problems come from the foundation layers. Um, the cause the problem is, if you mess up the foundation layers, it's usually cost prohibitive to go and fix them. Um, for example, the concrete pavement, you've got 12 inches of concrete, then you've got base materials beneath that. Is someone going to go, go in there and take all that material out and, and fix the damaged layer? It's not going to happen. So what you've done is, without a permanent foundation layer, you've created a big maintenance headache. So how does Techstar do it? Uh, what I've put in this presentation, or this slide here, is how they select the appropriate treatments and treatment level. And uh, the flow chart on the left uh, takes you through the standard tests they run. They run some Atterberg limits, they look at the gradation of the soil, and as you come across, the critical factor is the plasticity index of the soil itself. Um, if you follow that flow chart around, for our real problematic soils, these are the soils with very high PI values, PI values 30 plus. Uh, then we have the recommended treatment is lime. And that is, Textot has been using this very successful for a long, long time. And that's what we need to treat these real problematic soils in Texas. Lime is the treatment of option for our bad soils. How do we select the level that we're going to apply? Textot has a method, Textot's method 121E, and there's two parts to that. There's a pH Eads and Grimm test, which is in the photograph on the left, or there's some kind of strength test that can be run. Textot makes, gets the samples from the project, runs them through one or two of these tests, and comes up with how much lime do we need for a permanent foundation layer. And this has worked very successfully. What I have on this slide here is how one district has taken these recommendations and for their particular soils come up with recommendations on how to implement them. This one here talks about these PI values and if the PI value is less than a certain amount, do this. If it's more than a certain amount, thicken your layer. It also shows uh, the way we want the lime added and it's the depth needed. So this is, as I say, this is one district's standard operating procedure for designing a permanent foundation layer. Okay, what happens if you don't do it? If you don't do this, you can have some very premature failures. 
I spend a lot of time investigating failures and coming up with recommendations. The investigations is what went wrong, what do we do to fix it, and how do we avoid this stuff in the future. Uh, what you're looking at here is a, a recently constructed pavement where the foundation layer was changed. At, at the near part, which has failed, uh, they took the lime out of this pavement design, and at the far part, uh, they actually lime was in there. So as you see, this is not open to traffic, this is just under construction traffic, and you can see major cracking going on in that pavement there. Uh, we did an investigation of this, and uh, we did some strength testing. One of the things, we have some tools for tell us how strong that pavement is. The one tool that we use a lot is called a falling weight deflectometer. So we go along and measure the strength with this tool, and so we went through the no lime area, and we went through the lime area, and we got huge different strength values. So the lime had really taken that soil and totally strengthened it up. Where we didn't have lime, we had very, very low strengths. That's why the, the road cratered. Pulling out samples from these locations, you can really see what the lime has done. Uh, the materials on the left is just a very thick blob of clay, nasty clay. Um, and when you put the lime into it and mix it in properly at the right percentages, you really change that system altogether. Um, so at any rate, that's what happens when you don't do it correctly. So what I have here is soil stabilization can last throughout the pavement's life when it's designed properly. So what I want to do now is show you a few examples of very old pavements where we've gone and investigated these things and then found after many years in service, the lime layer is still there. This is, uh, this is a TxDOT in-house data and these slides here are courtesy of Ruben Carrasco, who's the head of the maintenance division or a, a, the pavement designer in the maintenance division. So Ruben went ahead and looked at several payments, and this is a payment from 1963, um, so it's over 60 years old, where we've, they're doing evaluation now. So they went in and looked at this payment structure to see if the, all the layers are still present. The cause they obtained from this payment, as you see, there's six or seven inches of asphalt, 10 inches of concrete, then there's a cement treated base, and the critical thing is that the very bottom there, that gray area, that's still a performing lime stabilized layer. So after 63 years, that stuff is still present. There's a concern sometimes that lime is not present and it will disappear. That's not the case if you use the textile procedures. A second project is this one here. And this, this uh, was in the Fort Worth district. And uh, coring of this one here, as you see, there's concrete. And there's a, this is 48 years after construction. And the purple uh, material at the bottom is a lime layer which has been uh, treated with phenolphthalein. It's an indicator. As you see, it's turned purple, which means the lime is still there, still present. The stiffness of this layer is shown in the chart there at 41 KSI. Uh, that's the strength of the lime layer. This, the soil beneath it has only got a strength of 10 KSI. So at any rate, after, what do we say, 48 years, you've still got a stiff layer there that's performing as designed. And that's just another case here from Houston, where we went ahead. We, we do this coring because we're planning a rehab on that. If there's any defects in the pavement, we want to identify them. And as you see here, there's no defects in any of those layers. After 25 years, that lime layer is still present. So just come back to the statement we made. Uh, the lime treated subgrade can last throughout the pavement's life when it's designed properly. And those case studies I gave you there really demonstrate that case. Thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of our podcast. If you want to learn more about the use of Lime, reach out to us on our website at limetexas.org. You can also email me at dalerand at limetexas.org. And please follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.